Good day and welcome to V2 Retail Limited Q2 and H1 FY25 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Before we begin, a brief disclaimer. The presentation which V2 Retail Limited has uploaded on the stock exchange and their website, including the discussions during this call, contains or may contain forward-looking statements concerning V2 Retail Limited business prospects and profitability which are subject to several risks and uncertainties and the actual result could materially differ from those in such forward-looking statements. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Akash Agarwal, Whole Time Director, V2 Retail. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to our quarter two and first six months earnings conference call. I hope everyone has an, had an opportunity to look at our results. The presentation and press release have been uploaded on the stock exchange and our company's website. Building on the momentum of a record FY24 performance, we are pleased to report a strong first half performance in FY25. Our outstanding results underscore the effectiveness of our strategic initiatives. The performance demonstrates our commitment to sustainable growth, customer delight, and operational excellence. We are confident in our ability to maintain this trajectory, driving continued success and value creation for our stakeholders. Our team of designers, merchandisers, and inventory managers drives our competitive advantage, distinguishing us from the competition. Their specialized knowledge enables us to design on-trend products that captivate customers, curate assortments that anticipate market shifts, and optimize inventory for efficiency and sustainability. This expertise fuels our ability to stay ahead of fashion trends, meet customer needs with precision, and minimize waste and maximize value. Our team's expertise is the backbone of our success, empowering us to deliver exceptional products experiences, and value to our customers. Let me start with some key updates. We are thrilled to start the current financial year with record half-yearly sales during the first half of FY25 and a 2,551% increase in year-on-year fat. The company added 22 net stores during the first half of the year, taking our total store count to 139 stores. We have added another five stores during the current quarter, taking the current store count to 144 stores. The store addition momentum will continue as we have a very healthy pipeline of upcoming stores. We have seen robust demand in ongoing festive season, and we are very hopeful that ensuing wedding season and the winter season will further strengthen our position in the areas we operate. The growth across all our stores have been encouraging, translating into a robust SSSG of 36% in the first six months of this year. We have been able to consistently deliver high double-digit SSSG for the last few quarters due to our customer-centric and product-first approach. The volume growth has been 49% in the first six months of the year. The full-price sales contributed 91% in the first six months of the year compared to 85% in the last, uh, last year for six months. We believe that our sustainable and scalable business model would help us to improve our ROCE and ROE going forward. Now I would uh, highlight some performance highlights for the first half of this year. Revenue from operations stood at 795 crores, registering a growth of 61% on year-on-year basis. Gross margin stood at 28.2% compared to 29.4% last year. EBITDA for the quarter stood at uh, 88.5 crores as compared to 55 crores in the same uh, six-month period last year, registering a growth of 60%. EBITDA margin stood at 11.1% as compared to 11.2% last year. PAT stood at 14.4 crores as compared to 50 lakhs in the corresponding period last year. Now, uh, performance highlights for the quarter. Revenue for the quarter stood at 380 crores, registering a growth of 64% on a year-on-year -year basis. 
Gross margin stood at 27.3% as compared to 28.1% in the corresponding quarter last year. EBITDA for the quarter stood at 33.1 crores as compared to 19.9 crores last year, registering a growth of 60%. EBITDA margin stood at 8.7% as compared to 8.6% in the corresponding quarter last year. With this, now I leave the floor open for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question comes from Abhishek from ABC Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to know what was the cause uh, for the loss in this quarter? Like, was it a conscious decision to in order to get higher volume? And will it happen in future going forward? So, it is uh, historically a cyclical business. So, uh, historically, Q1 and Q3 are our strong quarters, but uh, I think because our base has increased now, all four quarters are EBITDA positive, which was never the case. So uh, we will continue to deliver EBITDA positive uh, in all four quarters. But if you talk about bad numbers, yes, it's a cyclical business where the festive season is during Q3, so that's usually our best quarter. Then it's followed by Q1, and Q2 is a bit muted, and then it's Q4. Okay, okay. And uh, the investor presentation showed that uh, two stores were closed. Uh, what was the cause? Uh, so one store was uh, not profitable. So we always take into contingency that if we open uh, 100 stores, we, will, we might have to shut down four or five stores. And uh, one store we had to relocate because we found a better, loca uh, like a better flow plate and a better location in the same city. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Palash Kowale from Nuama Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on the good set of results. Uh, my uh, first question is on employee cost. So our employee cost was slightly elevated uh, in the quarter. So if I look at the historical trends, from Q1 to Q2, uh, there's not much difference in employee cost, but this time they were slightly elevated. So any reason, any particular reason or just uh, store additions? So like uh, we are uh, planning to open another 20 stores in the third quarter. So what happens is there's a lot of recruitment that happens uh, prior to the stores being opened. For example, there are 10 store managers already getting training in a lot of our old stores. So there will be a slight increase in cost because of the new store opening. Okay, got it. So uh, uh, what is the total number of stores that you plan to open in H2 set? Uh, it should be around 40 stores. Okay. Uh, and sir, if I look at the size of the opportunity or potential number of uh, towns or cities in the country, uh, how do you see that long-term opportunity or what is the deciding, that particular deciding factor that uh, you take in, into consideration if you want to enter a new town? Uh, I, I think it's too early to have that conversation because uh, uh, until unless we reach three, 4,000 stores, uh, there is uh, enough potential because we look at any constituency that has a population of more than 5 lakh. And there are a lot of tier one and tier two towns where we can have a multiple stores. For example, now in Bhubaneswar, we have five stores. In Patna, we have six stores. So there is a lot of uh, scope still left. So I think that conversation is once we reach uh, thousands of stores. Uh, okay, sir. That's it from my side. And uh, 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 happy Diwali to you. Thank you. The next question is from Yash from Stallion Asset. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations again on a good set of numbers. Uh, so I just wanted to understand uh, how is the festive season been like? You know, we've already been about three weeks in through October. Um, how do you are you assessing the demand right now? 
So I would say even in the first half of the year, because we had such a good uh, SSG last year, 51 percent, we had projected only 15 percent SSG, but uh, we we performed very well and uh, you know we exceeded our own expectation and we got a 34 percent and we've seen that momentum carry on to uh, October as well. And uh, but a lot depends on November and December and the winter and the wedding season. But uh, I would say we are still doing high double-digit uh, SSSG, and we have seen the footfalls uh, also increase uh, quite a bit. So it's, it's been uh, better than what we predicted. Okay, okay, that's good. And so, you know, as you said, there are, I mean, you know, your third quarter typically is the strongest quarter uh, for the company. And, you know, if I if I look at December 23 quarter, you had grown by almost 62% quarter on quarter. Uh, before that, December 22 quarter, you had grown about 25% quarter on quarter. So do you think then, you know, this quarter as well, we could see, uh, you know, uh, I'm not talking about exact numbers, but I'm just saying that uh, directionally you would see, you know, 25, 30, 40% and something along those lines like a very big jump or a quarter and quarter basis? If you talk about yes, total revenues, yeah, the revenue growth should be more than 30-35%. Uh, okay, on a quarter and quarter basis, you're saying, right? Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Ankush Agarwal from Surge Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, so the first question is about profitability. So how do you see profitability going into third quarter and for the full year, uh, given that gross margin uh, is something that we have seen consistently reduce a percentage or so every quarter? Uh, and I do understand that reducing gross profit margin but uh, having higher operating leverage in the EBITDA margin is uh, doable. But at what point do you believe uh, this gross margin will stabilize and at what level you can have it? So uh, we've always mentioned that uh, instead of focusing on gross margin percentage, we always focus on EBITDA percentage. So if you look at the first six months, last year our EBITDA pre NDS was 16.7 crores, and this year it's 40 crores, which is almost a 140% jump. So I think uh, if you look at EBITDA, uh, we, have, we have been exceptional. And going forward, we always guide that we want to reach 10% Free India at EBITDA levels in the next two to three years. Ten percent free India in uh, the next two to three. Uh, any idea on how much it, uh, you would be able to reach this year, FY25? So this year our EBITDA uh, guidance is about 120 crores. Free India. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second question is around store addition. Uh, so for last two three quarters we have consistently seen uh, you exceeding uh, your store guidance. Uh, now, this quarter, you're saying that you're going to add another 40 stores in H2. So you would be exceeding your earlier guidance of 50 stores in uh, FI25. So I wanted to understand at what point of time do you think that uh, you will, uh, you know, uh, curtail the store expansion because, because beyond a certain point, uh, aggressive store expansion will obviously put uh, constraint on, you know, uh, operating leverage, your cash flow and working capital requirements. And over time, the SSG itself is going to taper off from the current high level. So that itself would uh, not allow a lot of operating levels on existing stores to put more new stores. So at what point do you think uh, you will, uh, you know, curtail this aggression? Because given the guidance of H2, you will probably close FI25 with around 50% store growth. Yes, uh, but if you look at the last four years, uh, it was a period of consolidation. And there wasn't much growth, and we did not add a lot of stores. We were focusing on strengthening our model. We were focusing on strengthening our product. And uh, now we, uh, we we see the results of the hard work that we put in the last four years. So now we feel like if we get an ROE of around 20%, then uh, we can easily open 50, 60 stores in a year. So I don't think it's a very ambitious number. And uh, that is why, like, if we get a good location, and uh, even the new stores the base is much higher now. So two years back, the new stores used to do 600 rupees per square feet per month. But now even the new stores have a base of 900 rupees per square feet per month. So uh, we don't want to keep money in the bank when we can. We have the management bandwidth and uh, the uh, merchandising bandwidth to be able to open 50, 60 new stores with internal accruals. 
because we are not leveraging our business in order to open these stores. So I think it's a very uh, realistic and a uh, you know a, a target that we can easily achieve without compromising on business metrics. Got it. Got it. Got it. That was helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Varun Singh from AAA PMS. Please, please go ahead. Am I on? So there is a lot of echo. If you are using the speaker phone, may we request you use the handset, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is on uh, the productivity improvement uh, revenue per square feet uh, number is. Uh, uh is quite good for us right now but uh, on this front like what is the uh, how do you look at you know how much scope is left for improving this number further from the current level of uh, maybe 900000 rupees uh, that's my first question so if you if you talk about scope i we have like i think more than 20 stores that do more than 1400 rupees per square feet of sale also so I think the day we feel that each and every option or the whole assortment in our store is, uh, you know, best in class, best in the world, that day we'll be able to tell you, okay, this is this is the potential that uh, our, uh, the maximum per square feet sale that a store can do. But I don't think we will ever reach uh, a day where we feel, okay, we can't do anything better in our assortment. So, like I said, even with the 31% SSSG last year. Uh, you know, we are showing a 34% SSSG this year. So there are a lot of stores that are already doing 1400 rupees per square feet. They are also growing at 20-25%. So I, I don't think there's a cap to this number. But yes, our first target was to reach 1000 rupees per square feet of sale, which we'll do, uh, I think we'll uh, exceed that this year. And our next immediate target would be 1200 rupees per square feet of sale per month. But if you talk about potential, I think uh, it's if, if your product is world class and if you sell products at the margin that we sell, which is best in the industry, uh, you know, it's a, only a 55% markup and we are selling 91% of our products at full price, then I, I think the sky is, uh, sky is the limit. There's immense potential. Understood. Understood. Oh, all right. So, I mean, on 1400 rupees, 25% uh, uh, SSG, if we are able to do it, so then uh, like 1750. Uh, is the number, uh, and if we do uh, into 12, so that uh, 20 odd thousand rupee per square feet annual, uh, that number is quite, I mean, that's quite good, right? Understood, sir. And secondly, uh, on the product uh, development uh, front, uh, like how, uh, what are the key markers for us uh, with regards to what are we doing currently to uh, you know, keep that uh, keep the team at the uh, the best in class. Uh, if you can maybe want to highlight anything on that front. Yeah. So see, every product has four main attributes. It's the design, the fabric, the color, the fit. So you know, it's it's getting uh, all four correct. So even if you get three of those right and one wrong, then the product doesn't sell. So in terms of product development, it's all about research. It's all about, uh, you know, who your inspiration brands are, what kind of fashion are you following, what kind of brand identity you are uh, trying to create. So, uh, like, it, it's very hard, hard to put into simple words, but uh, there are uh, N number of uh, processes that the team has to go through, whether it's using uh, some, you know, paid tools in order to get what uh, color forecast is there, for the next season, what kind of fits are going to sell in the next season, what kind of new fabrics are going to sell in the next season. So it's a, I, I think it's a mixture of, uh, you know, using data, leveraging data in order to uh, see historical trends as well as forecasting future trends and creating a assortment with uh, the best blend of both of that. Yeah, got it. Uh, so that that's about the product development and about the team. So, like, yeah, we have almost a 40 to 50 member team and all the crucial people have been given retention bonuses and uh, they are all uh, linked to the profitability of the company. They all have uh, incentives also that is linked to their target. So I think it's a uh, healthy situation to be in. Right, right. No, no, actually what I meant was like uh, 
मे बी हाउ मेनी फॉरेन ट्रिप्स एक्सेट्रा दैट द टीम वुड बी डूइंग Uh, or uh, like uh, what are the activities that they are doing to you know uh, 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 which is leading uh, to this uh, fantastic revenue per square feet numbers etc so i was i just wanted to maybe uh, i can't like i can't i don't know the exact number of trips but yeah the team travels no, to not not yeah. exact i mean but anything on 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 that front yeah yeah, yeah definitely so there there's both international and national brands that we follow and there's a lot of uh, international i would say sourcing in terms of accessories and fabrics which is very important to create the latest fashion so when i say research it has to be done internationally and domestic both and uh, all the division heads they travel they 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 see uh, what's going on what's the new trend and that's how we design our new season and uh, so just one last question if i may uh, in any of our location Uh, is there a zudio store uh, nearby and uh, if yes uh, i mean how has uh, been the performance uh, of the, of that uh, 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 of the store in that location uh, that's my last question sir yeah i think we share uh, uh, almost 20 stores where uh, a zudio is within a 3 4 km uh, radius next to our store but we haven't seen any sort of significant impact due to zudio opening because uh, you know our asp is 260 to 270 rupees whereas uh, zudio's asp exceeds 500 so i think uh, the customer class is a uh, different there might be an overlap but uh, it's a uh, very small overlap and uh, india is a big market where you know more than 80% is still yeah, in yeah. unorganized retail so it it can easily accommodate four five big national level players Not but of course it's a, it's of course depends on who's executing their plan well and uh, what yeah. what kind of a niche are you targeting and what where where, where do you position your brand absolutely and sir for these 20 stores our revenue per square feet would be uh, more than 1000 rupees per month i would have to take out the average but now the company average is more than 1000 so yes i think yeah yeah uh, it, it will be there on that All right, sir. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you very much, and wish you a very happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Chintan Shah from GM Financial Family Office. Please go ahead. I thank you so much for the opportunity. So I just had one question. So if we see right now the scenario, I mean everybody is looking to add uh, uh, capacities or add stores, and whether in our segment or slightly more even in the premium segment. So, just wanted to understand. I mean, this is not from a next three to four quarter perspective, but slightly uh, medium term. You know, what's giving us the confidence that you know, considering the end customer we cater to, which is sensitive to say macroeconomic as well as other factors. So, what giving us the confidence that uh, you know we add such stores and beyond three four quarters as well, uh, basically such demand trend will continue. and you know we won't see a situation of something like that happened in fy 18 19 it started adding stores and gradually the super store etc number the planning and something or other that uh, helps us and then we get impacted so this time just want to understand what is giving us the confidence that we won't face a similar situation across the industry and for us as well thank you so the biggest change i would say is the business model itself and we completely reinvented ourselves so in fy uh, 18 19 we were essentially doing a commodity business where uh, there was no product differentiation there was no competitive advantage you could find the same designs or similar products in other stores so there was no brand identity so now you know the work that we put in the last 4 years now it's a completely different business model so it's a product first approach and if you talk about value fashion and fast fashion it's a global phenomenon for the last 10 years if you look at brands like sheen if you look at brands like pretty little liars primark so this is a segment which is not cyclical as a sector there will always be value conscious customers and in india the middle class is booming so there would never be a uh, I, i think there would never be a time where you know we would not have a customer base the customers that we targeting is anyone who earns between 10000 rupees a month to almost 70 80000 rupees a month 
So that covers almost 80% of India. So if you talk about the business model, then like uh, this because the Gen Zs uh, have a very different uh, shopping habit, where you know they're looking for affordability and the frequency of purchases have also increased. So it uh, plays into our strength uh, and uh, uh, the confidence comes from the fact that we've been able to increase our first country sale from, I think it was 680 two years back and now this year we'll do more than 1,000. So it, it, it shows that the acceptability of the product is there and the customer is actually seeing the value that they're getting and they know that the kind of quality that they're getting in V2 uh, it's an unmatched price. So everybody understands uh, value, and especially India, we're all value. Co there are a lot of value-conscious customers. So that that's what gives us confidence that you know it's the result, and it's the footfall growth, it's the revenue growth, it's the profit growth. And the best thing about this business is, you know, the same bandwidth can handle hundred more stores because you essentially have to just plan the same number of options. So we want to leverage our existing team. The foundation that we have laid and that's why we want to expand now because the last four years were a period of consolidation and it was a period of uh, reinventing ourselves, it was a period of you know, working on uh, increasing our first traffic sales and working on the product and we feel we've been able to do a good job in that and that is why we feel now, you know, we want to increase our footprint. Got it, understood. That's a fair point. Just one follow-up on that. So if we see all the other organized uh, players also, what even they are trying to do is, you know, getting more into private label sales. That is what they're trying to chip. So my biggest concern is as they increase their store throughput over, say, next, increase the store count over next two years, basically, then does that value proposition or the increased competitive intensity could hamper our uh, SSSG growth? And uh, as you put more stores, actually, uh, the numbers that we're looking at, probably that could be lower and that could impact our overall financials. So, it's not about who does private labels or who does product development. Even if you look at the best brands in the world, like if you compare Zara to any other brand, it's not like Zara has a different process. Everybody does product development. But it's how you do it, and at the end of the day, it's the assortment that you put in your store. So we, we feel, you know, and the numbers uh, say that, uh, that, you know, the assortment that we have is much superior to uh, our, our peers. So it's not that anyone who increases their private label contribution or product development is going to get an SSLG or is going to grow their throughput. Because... At, like it, it depends how you're executing it because, like I said, even a brand who does 1,200 rupees per square meter of sale does the same process, and a brand who does 700 rupees per square meter of sale does the same process. So it's the secret sauce is not the process, but uh, the result of the output or the assortment that you get out of it. Got it. Understood. And just one last question from my side, that is on a margins. So I mean, this a quarter when we had such a uh, strong SSSG growth plus ASPs have increased plus uh, discounting, discounted sales has been lower. Such a quarter where margins have largely been flat. Now, from a next couple of years perspective, when you're adding so many stores, there's obviously going to be uh, cost that going to come in. And the current existing stores, if I see the margins have been similar. So... While you're guiding for, say, 10% pre index EBITDA margin, I mean, how do we reach there, basically? What's the, what will drive the margin expansion? So, most of our costs are fixed costs. So it's a fixed cost business where, you know, variable cost is a very small proportion of total cost. So, even if we increase our sales by 10%, you're essentially increasing profitability by 18 19%. So, even in the future, we are guiding for an SSSG of 10%. So if you do the math, uh, within two years, uh, we'll reach an EBITDA percentage of 10%, percent pre India. But wouldn't that uh, should be impacted by the cost that will come in from the new stores? No, the cost would not exceed 200 rupees per square feet per month, even if you're opening new stores. Okay. Okay, fine. All right. Thank you so much for answering the questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Harsh from Napian Capital. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, while all my uh, rest of the answers, uh, questions have been answered, uh, the only question I had was on the uh, store closure going ahead. So, with you know, uh, nearly nine stores being closed in FY24 uh, and two stores, uh, you know, uh, being closed in the current quarter, what is our target uh, store closure for going ahead? So, currently, uh, like, uh, we don't have any stores that are below the line where we decide to close the store. But like I said, we are opening so many new stores, so there's always a contingency and we always take that into account that we might have to shut down 2-3% uh, of the stores. So the store closure cost is about 300 rupees per square feet because most of the fixed assets and other uh, things are used, can be used in the uh, other stores. So it's a part of business and whenever we open stores, we know there might be a chance that you know we might have to shut it down. So that's about... The, the closure rate should be about 3 to 4%. Got it. And if I just may squeeze in one more question. Uh, I couldn't uh, really understand the uh, contraction in our gross margin. You know, the ACs have improved and uh, the earlier participant also said that, you know, the discount rates have also gone down. But uh, despite of that, you know, the gross margins have remained slightly lower. So the reason for that, um, that's my yeah, last so question. We, we focused a lot on marketing. And uh, our marketing cost is a part of our uh, COGS. That is why it is reflected in the gross margin. So we've been running a lot of schemes and offers for our customers to increase the average bill value and to increase the conversion. And we've seen good results of that. So, and going forward also, like I said, you know, we don't want to target a gross margin percentage number as long as our absolute EBITDA uh, and uh, EBITDA percentage increases. Uh, we don't we don't uh, want to focus on just gross margin percentage. At the end of the day, what matters is if your sales are increasing 20% and your uh, gross margin is decreasing only 5%, so it's still better for our business. Got it. Uh, that's all for my end. Uh, festive greetings to you and the team. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Yash Sontalia from YN Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on the good set of numbers. So my first question is, has, has earlier participants also mentioned like we are uh, upgrading our guidance of store opening. So will we be able to open those stores from the internal approval or our debt on the balance sheet will increase for the year? No, it will be through internal approval and even that the debt that we have on our books it's essentially for bill discounting. So our vendors have a facility where they can take payments at a, and they can discount their bills whenever they want. So we have a CC limit from the bank and we use it because we want to be one of the pay, best paymasters in the industry. And we want to give that facility to our vendors. Got it. And second question, like everyone was mentioning the competition in the market is increasing. So many of your peers are opening more and more store like you. So do you think this will increase your cost of acquisition of customers like in this quarter the advertisement cost increased due to which the gross margins have declined? So do you think structurally your employee cost or maybe your uh, marketing cost will increase? No, I don't think it will increase. But rather, I would say, you know, as we are opening more stores, we'll be able to leverage our head office and uh, DC costs. So going forward, uh, I think the cost per square feet will come down when we open more stores. Got it. And, and we were doing some improvement on the inventory side in our uh, warehousing and stock keeping units. So where are we on that? Uh, what kind of improvement? Sorry. So the backup stock we were trying to reduce from, I think, 30 days to 15, 20 days with more orders coming on time. Yeah, so we have been able to increase the on-time delivery from almost 40% to 80% in the last 7-8 months by, you know, educating our vendors, by improving our TNA, by hiring a lot of QCs at the source city. And uh, I think the inventory days, the inventory change that you're talking about, it will start uh, to be in effect from quarter four. Got it. So what 
what are our expectations or the ballpark number of inventory days for the upcoming years so we should be able to reduce it by 10 days from uh, you know the last 18 month historical number got it thanks that's all from my side happy diwali to the team thank you thank you the next question is from tejesh shah from avendus park institutional equities please go ahead uh hi thanks for the opportunity and congrats on good set of numbers uh first question is uh when we see uh the numbers uh, it is largely that you have kind of uh, countered the overall slowdown uh and then and at the same time your number also confirms the the feedback that we are getting from fmcg companies that there is some uptick at the mass end of the pyramid so just wanted to know when you when you double click on your store uh, uh your growth based by uh, uh, tier 2 tier 3 and then metro wise uh, what are the consumer trend that you are reading at overall level so i would say the macro economic uh, you know factors are still a bit negative uh, even if you look at uh, the uh, the results that have come out in uh, consumer Uh, durables and uh, fmcg companies it's not that promising so i would say the growth that we are showing now is uh, down to our own strength and our own the changes that we have made so even if you compare it with our peers you know we have uh, we have been much ahead so i think that macro economic push is still pending where the overall demand uh, has seen an uptick so i think uh, when we see that then the numbers will be even better because overall rural and tier 3 uh, i think uh, it has been a bit of a slow down in the last 18 months interesting and and uh, just to uh, um, expand that point uh, are you also seeing that your metro or tier 1 store would have uh, not done as well as your tier let's say 2 3 4 stores no in fact you know we have almost uh, i think we have five stores in delhi now and three of those stores do better than uh, national average so even if you have a tier one store uh, the strategy uh, the strategy around the location uh, matters a lot so even in delhi so we we are uh, located in a location called mypalpur kapa shera so you have to be in a location where you know there are a lot of migrants uh, population and there's a lot of low middle class middle class customer so like i said the customers that we cater to is 80% of india so even in tier 1 there are people who are servicing the upper class so if we open a store there then it does well perfect uh second question uh, just to uh, get some sense on the nature of expansion that we are planning Uh, are we focusing on deepening our presence in existing markets or are we entering new states new markets and additionally if you have to just give a ballpark that uh, what percentage of expansion will be in existing states or markets versus the new one so i think 80% of the expansion would be in existing clusters or states that we already present in but yes we are testing new uh, markets also because you know the next 2 3 years we want to be a national level retailer but uh, only one or two stores there to test the water check the local trend and trend in our model in that particular state and then we'll expand in that state but i think around 80 85% will be in existing clusters and states that we are present in but and the last one if i may uh, usually what is the thumb rule that we should work with let's say for 50 more stores how much of uh, dc area you will need to add or or will you need a So separate all together a new warehouse to fund uh, to to support this expansion so the figure is around like 15% you always need as a warehouse space of your total retail area so if you are opening uh, 50 more stores at 5 lakh square feet so we would need about 75000 to 1 lakh square feet extra for that okay so so this will be brownfield or you will uh, kind of uh, uh, zero down on a new location so currently we are servicing everything for farooq nagar so we have taken over the dc that can support us for another i think 80 90 stores so like the kind of expansion plans that we have 
maybe in the future we'll have a regional DC where we'll have a south DC, uh, east DC and a north DC. Perfect. Uh, that's all from my side, and uh, Diwali wishes to you and the team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to register for questions, please press star and 1 on your touchstone phone. The next question comes from Virendra Bajaj, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, my question is already answered by this person. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. The next question comes from Rahul M., a retail investor. Please go ahead. Rahul, your line is unmuted. Please proceed with your question. Okay, hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Please go ahead. So, congrats on a great set of numbers. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, first is around uh, V2 Smart Manufacturing, the FCD that you have. So, I think in the last call, uh, you had mentioned that uh, there is a 10 to 15 percent cost advantage that you get, uh, you know, for the apparel which is uh, manufactured uh, in house versus what you source. So, I was wondering whether there is any plan to expand the capacity of that uh, subsidiary. Or if, uh, you know, it doesn't make much business sense whether you are going to have it off and free up some capital. So, plans to expand the manufacturing facility. And uh, the whole idea behind it was to get, uh, you know, the kind of efficiency where we can negotiate with our vendors better. So, now we have transparent costs of making each and every garment. And it has really helped us in, uh, you know, getting contract manufacturing also done. So, now... Uh, you know, last year I think our own manufacturing constituted 20%. It's already down to 15 and it will keep going down in the future. So, we have been able to achieve the goal behind why we opened those. And now, we've been getting that benefit of cost by, uh, you know, showing the kind of efficiency that we show in our own factory and tying up with uh, good manufacturers. Got it. And another question is that, um, uh, you know, although last two years have been uh, amazing from an execution standpoint, but uh, I think uh, almost sky is the limit, right? Uh, you also mentioned earlier in the call that 1,000 plus stores, uh, you know, can be reached without a sweat. So as you expand, uh, are there any special initiatives that the company is taking uh, to, let's say, expand the management capacity or, you know, any people or HR practices? Uh, to bring down the retail store attrition or maybe run a loyalty program for the you know, repeat customers and so on. Yeah, so there's a uh, lot of things always happening and uh, there's a lot of hiring also happening. There's a lot of retention uh, things that are happening. Like I said, there are a lot of retention bonuses also. There's a lot of team building activities and <clears throat> the kind of training and the career path that we have in our company, <coughs> I think uh, that is why it's, it's one of the best in the industry because we have a lot of examples where, you know, the salesperson sees that, uh, like, our retail head was a salesperson uh, and he started from the slow level and now he's a retail head. So there are a lot of examples within the company that uh, motivates others uh, in a way that they, they see that, you know, they can have a similar career path because uh, there are a lot of internal appraisals that happen. And uh, I think uh, that's, that's good for any company. Okay. Thanks a lot and, you know, have a great Diwali. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Shreyant J from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. <coughs> Hello, Akash. Uh, great set of numbers. Congratulations on that. Uh, you mentioned uh, that, you know, your your cost per square foot is about 200 bucks a month. Now, if I were to think about uh, the total uh, store uh, area at the end of FI25, so my senses will end at about 18 lakh square feet, right? And if I take a 1,000 rupees square foot of sales, so we'll do about 1,800-odd crores. And uh, like we're saying, we'll do gross margins of 25 so, I'm just trying to understand when you're saying 120 crores of EBITDA for the year, uh, the maths doesn't add up because, you know, you do 200 rupees a square foot, so that's 2400 uh, cost, right? 2400 per square foot into 12 probably, right? So, 
uh, into 18 lakh square feet. So that's about 430 crores of cost, and you're going to do in uh, gross margins of about 450, 500 crores. You know, so you actually end up with about three to four percent EBITDA margin. So I'm just trying to understand uh, where how are we getting 120 crores of EBITDA? Just if you can help me understand. This. Yeah, because the gross margin that you're taking is 25, whereas the actual gross margin is 28. That's where the error is. But uh, you also mentioned that, you know, Q2 and Q4 is slightly weaker for you, you know, so blended, you think you can end the year at 28%? Yes. Okay. Because Q3 is good. Q3, Q3 is usually 30% gross margin. <coughs> Okay, so and in this 200 rupees square foot a month, um, you don't see any, so this is after considering inflation and uh, new store expenses and all of that. Yeah, as we open stores, it should come down to 190 because we'll be leveraging, like I said, there's a lot of hiring that has already happened at the head office and the store level in order to service the new stores. So once we, are, uh, we open these 50 stores, I think this number should come down to 190. Okay, and uh, this 190, what is your guidance for the next two to three years? Say, what kind of leverage do we have in this number? I think it should remain at 190. So whatever leverage or whatever inflation we get will be set off with the leverage of additional area. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Nitesh Kumar, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Mr. Kumar, your line is unmuted. Please proceed with your question. Uh, yes. Am I audible to you? Yes. Uh, you need to speak a little louder, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity and congratulations to the management on the good set of numbers. The, my question is for the employment front, like employment generation. Uh, could you give me an average number of person employed on a single store? Like, uh, it's about 35, 35 people per store, 10,000 square feet. Okay, 10,000 square feet and 35 number of And uh, what's the approach of management like increasing the employment of in a single employ store or uh, like automation near future? I don't understand your question, sorry. Like the... Uh, management approach for increasing the number of employees or uh, decreasing near future? So I think we have, uh, you know, been very efficient. Uh, and we have focused on creating a process uh, in, at the store level where we don't need a lot of salespeople at the floor to attend to the customer because now each and every garment in our store is like hanging. So there's no stacking at the store where you need to uh, you need staff in order to uh, set the garments back. So that is why we've been able to run such big stores with only 30-35 manpower and it's, I think it's essential manpower only now, which is, you know, cashiers and the uh, guard and the housekeeping. So there's, I, I don't think there's scope to reduce this further. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thanks a lot and all the best for the safety season. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Simanto Saini, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for providing the opportunity. So I just wanted to know that can you share the uh, cost spend on advertisement for this quarter? Are we sharing that? Uh, the cost of advertisement would be less than, I would say, 0.5%. But when I say marketing cost, so we give a lot of gifts to customers. Whereas we have a lot of bill busters running at the store level uh, where, you know, we, uh, for example, we are giving a, we were giving a bed sheet only for 99 rupees. And that bed sheet costs us almost 160, 170 rupees. So we tell the customer that if you buy for more than 1500 or uh, 2000, then you can get a bed sheet at that price, where the market price of that bed sheet would be 300, 400. So uh, instead of advertising cost, it's a lot of, uh, marketing costs in terms of kind and gifts to customers. So that would be about 1.5%. Uh, okay, and with the increase in the competition, so how are you seeing the marketing cost or the advertisement cost to, like it to be, to be the same in the coming quarters or uh, would it increase? 
and by how many basis point if you can clarify that it should be the same uh, i think uh, because like i said you know our markup is only 55% we are already giving a lot of value to the customer and we are passing on a lot of benefit to the customer and the customer sees that so our product is our brand ambassador and that's the best marketing tool the the kind of variety and the assortment we sell and the price that we sell at so our marketing cost will always be around 1 1.5% including the gifts and the offers that we give at the stores okay and what is the average cost of store uh, opening a new store the capex required is uh, 1000 rupees per square feet so for a 10000 square feet store it's 1 crore okay and what would be the average uh, square feet size for a showroom average what square feet like what would be the size of a showroom in average, average store size is 10000 square feet okay okay yeah thank you and all the best thank you thank you the next question comes from abhishek from abc capital please go ahead hello am i audible yes sir ha uh-huh. um can you uh, what kind of uh, pack number are we targeting internally this year pack ha ha so uh, we targeted abita pre days abita of 120 crore so i think pack is 55% of that so it should be about oh. uh, 60 65 crore okay okay thanks thank yeah Abhishek, so you have any further questions? No, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Paramjit Singh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yep, uh, Mr. Akash, uh, uh, I am a pretty old shareholder. I want to understand if you open a store now, how long does it take to reach uh, per square foot sales of thousand? This is the situation two years ago. So uh, two years back. our company average was 680 and new stores did 550 to 600 rupees per square feet per month and now the company average is more than 1000 and new stores the base is around 900 rupees per square feet and historically we have seen it takes about uh, 18 to 24 months for a store to mature so when we see the cohort we see that you know the stores that we opened in the last 3 years are growing at a faster rate than the mature stores so it takes about Two two years for them to come close to the old stores. So you mean if you open a store now, it will take two years to give you a per square feet sales of thousand rupees per per month? No, uh, what I mean is, so going forward, like I said, you know, uh, so this year we will do more than one thousand, and going forward next two years our target is twelve hundred rupees per month per square feet sale. So. the maturity period is 2 years it depends on the company base so when the company base becomes 1200 then it will take 2 years for those new stores to do 1200 but now okay. the stores that we opened 2 years back they have reached the 1000 after 2 years this year okay okay got it and and one more question from my side i want to understand do you have any plans for let's say fund raise qip uh, i mean your your competitor zubi opens 200 stores uh, every year last last fiscal year and maybe this fiscal year as well so if you have everything set uh, processes defined round work done over last four years uh, why not accelerate more and open 200 stores in a year with some qip fund raise and all that is is are you thinking on those lines uh no we're not thinking on those lines because of course like when you grow at that pace it comes with an added bit of risk and uh, we feel you know we have only implemented maybe 20 25% of the vision that we have for our assortment this is just the beginning so i think if we reach that magic number of 1200 rupees per square feet per month and you know roe of 25% then we might uh, think on those lines and currently we feel we're still undervalued and uh, so i think i think maybe uh, in a couple of years uh, this would change okay and one more thing uh, one of your competitor also got into uh, beauty segment right i mean zudio beauty and all they have opened so in the longer term do you see this value uh, 
conscious market will also expand for you beyond apparel and maybe some more categories as well. How, how do you foresee future for retail retail? See, uh, we can't predict the future, but right now we don't have any plans to dilute our focus in any other category or even premiumization or any other brand. We want to focus on this, increase the footprint because there's immense potential just in this model. Uh, maybe in the future we see when we feel okay, this is getting saturated, and you know we have the bandwidth to expand into other uh, categories or models. We will think about it, but right now there are no plans. Okay, got it. Thank you, and uh, Diwali greetings to you and the team. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Akash Singh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Mr. Singh, your line is unmuted. Please proceed with your question. As there is no response from the line of current participant, we'll move on to our next question. Our next question is from Kushal Goenka, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, sir, what kind of post IMDS num EBITDA number that you are looking for for FY25? Uh, we don't look at, uh, you know, even the projections that we make, we don't do post in there because okay. pre in there only makes sense to us. So uh, even the investors and, you know, internal targets, everything is pre in there. All the reports are pre in there. So we don't, like, we don't even make the numbers for post in there. Okay, thank you. And uh, second question would be, uh, since Q2, uh, do you think from next year, like FI26, uh, Q2, we can see a positive pact because since we are growing and if we get the operating leverage, so can we see a positive pact from Q2 next year? Yeah, definitely it can be, but the first target was to be EBITDA positive in four, all four quarters, which we will achieve this year. But uh, then the next target would be pact positive in the, uh, uh, all, all, all the four quarters. So hopefully by next year we can do that as well. Okay, okay, that's great. Thank you so much and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Manav, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, so can you give the store addition for the H2? How much is going to add in the H2 this year? So uh, I think I already mentioned it. We would add around 40 stores in H2. And uh, so can you give the sales with guidance and the same store sales with guidance for uh, this year? So first six months it was uh, 34 percent, and I think for H2 our target is around uh, 15 to 20 percent. Hi. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Bhagyavant Reddy, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. I uh, just wanted to know uh, the current ratio of uh, uh, stores that are profitable and that are burning. So how many stores are, are profitable and how many are in loss right now? So we don't have a single store right now which is a loss. I think it's the first time in the company is free. Okay, that's great, that's great. And uh, I had another question on our uh, manufacturing. Uh, all our manufacturing is done in India or uh, some part of it is overseas? Uh, it's a very insignificant amount, like, uh, most of it is from India. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Happy Diwali. Yeah, but we are exploring uh, Bangladesh as a alternate. Okay, okay. Thank you. The next question is from Vinayak Kariwal from Exponent Tribe. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, so, so you mentioned that uh, uh, you were basically uh, doing commodity in 18 and 19, and now you have uh, focused on uh, your brand identity. So I wanted to know, what is the unique uh, selling proposition? So if we imagine a style bazaar or uh, various other value retailers compared to a B2 standing there, uh, what, will, what will a customer 
why will a customer enter a V2 and not the other players? Uh, will it be the unique uh, uh, pricing or the product or the store experience? So what's, what's the focus and USP there? Yeah, so, uh, you know, historically people used to follow brands or buy brands because they found something different or they found the latest trend or, uh, you know, whatever that celebrity is wearing or whatever the fashion influencers are wearing, they always found, uh, found that product in that brand. And that's why they were willing to pay higher for that particular assortment. But now, like I said, because of fast fashion and because now, uh, you know, the cost of making the garment is not a lot, but the brand markup is almost 500 to 600%. So we want to bridge that gap where, you know, our markup is only 155%. So the cost to MRP multiple is, there's a huge difference. So, you know, we were just uh, taking a feedback from our customers and one of the customers said, okay, I bought a Levi's t-shirt for 2200 rupees. And, you know, I'm getting a better t-shirt in V2 for 300 rupees. So when people thought about brands earlier, they thought, okay, uh, because it's at a higher price, it means it is a better product, which is not true. It is a higher price because it has a higher markup. So <coughs> when you say, why won't a customer walk into V2? Because they will be able to find the latest fashion, the best fabric, the best colors, the best fit, and they would get that product at a 55% markup. So that that's the unique selling proposition or, you know, that's the value proposition. But like I said, we've only been uh, able to implement maybe 20-25% of uh, the product assortment that we want to have. And the day we reach 100%, I think, like I said, the sky is the limit and uh, it'll be amazing uh, whoever is able to do that actually in India. Okay, sir. Uh, so, so you think... Uh... Uh, if, a, if a store near you could uh, do a lesser markup or uh, provide a higher value proposition, maybe uh, your competitive advantages would suffer? So it's ju not just about the markup. Like I said, you know, again, it's assortment as well. Anyone can sell at a lower price. But, uh, you know, you cannot talk about assortment in words. Uh, if you actually visit a store versus our competitors, then you'll see the difference. And numbers say, and numbers talk. So everyone can say that their assortment is better than the other. But at the end of the day, it's the customer who decides. And, uh, you know, like, Zubio has n number of competitors from, you know, Avicya Milla has Style Up, there's Style Union. There are n number of competitors. But if you walk into Zubio, it'll always have five times the customer than any other closest competitor. So... Until unless you visit the store and see the product, it's very hard to put into words that uh, what what the customer is getting different. Because it's not like they have different margin strategy or Zubio is selling at a much lower price than its competitor. But uh, it, it's the assortment, you know. Uh, the kind of, like I said, four attributes of a product, you have to get all four correct. And uh, you have to do that for 3200 designs. So, at any given point of time, at any of our stores, there are 3,200 designs and 3,200 SKUs. So it's, it's all about a thought. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we would take that as our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Akash Agarwal for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining on the call. We hope we've been able to answer your query. For any further information, we request you to get in touch with Marathon Capital, our investor relations advisor. Wish you all a very happy Dipavli and New Year. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of V2 Retail Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.